Welcome back to our series on probability theory. I'm Mark Ledbetter. This is lecture video 43, part B, and we are continuing with bivariate transformations. So in the last video, we talked about the continuous transformations. We, we went over the one-to-one -one, uh, transformation theorem, or the transformation theorem for one-to-one -one functions of x and y. And we can call this the bivariate inverse transformation theorem, or the bivariate inverse transformation, or bivariate transformation theorem, or the bivariate inverse transformation theorem. Okay, so we're going to continue with the example we were working on last time. So we went over the theorem, and then we started working on this um, example where we have x and y that are independent, normal, uh, normally distributed random variables. They're actually standard normal random variables. And so in this case, they are IID. X and Y are IID. Identical, independent, and identically distributed. Okay? That's a term you need to know. And so because they're independent, this is just F of X times F of Y multiplied by each other, which makes it easy to find the joint. Then we used, we said we want to let u equals x plus y, v equals x minus y, and we want to find the distributions of um, u and v. And so we had to, um, so we solved x here, and we found that it was uh, u minus y. Then we substituted in for this, where we, we solve for y in this other equation, and substitute that in. You can't substitute in y from this equation, or else you will end up with 0 or y equals y or something like that, or x equals x. You'll, you'll end up with something that uh, doesn't help you at all. So we use the other equation, substitute that in for y. Um, that gives us this and here, and we substitute and we solve for x, and we get that x is equal to u plus v over 2. We do a similar thing that I went over last time, and we get that y is equal to u minus v over 2. We went through the calculation of the Jacobian, the meaning the derivatives that we took, and we came up with the Jacobian as a negative 1 half. We have to separately take the absolute value of that. Okay? And so that becomes a positive 1 half. So now let's use the um, transformation theorem. And the transformation theorem said that we have f of w uh, oh, actually, let's see, f of h1, comma, h2, times the absolute value of the Jacobian, okay? And so, the joint distribution of uh, x and y is given here. So, this is the joint distribution of x and y. But we have to substitute in for x, and we have to substitute in for y using these inverse transformations here. And so, I'll zoom in, and then we have the Jacobian here. So for x, we said that x was equal to u plus v over 2. And so x squared is going to be u plus v over 2 squared. And then y was u minus v over 2, so we square that. Make sure you're careful with your parentheses here, that we, we want to keep this parenthesis and this parenthesis. The squares are inside there, and then divided by 2. And then we have multiplied by the absolute value of the Jacobian, which is 1 half. Okay? Now we expand this. Now, now when I square this, I've skipped a few steps here. But this is u plus v squared over 2 squared, which is 4, okay? And then I have a 2 out here, so this would be plus u minus v squared over 4, and the whole thing times, uh, or divided by 2, which is the same as multiplying by a half. So that's where we get the 8th here. And then we have this expression here that we can simplify. You notice this and this cancel. And then I have um, u squared, u squared, v squared, v squared. So I have two of each of them. And so I end up with negative 1 8, 2u squared plus 2v squared. I can cancel out, so I can factor out. I have to be careful. Uh, make sure that you 
uh, do this correctly. So you have negative 1 eighth, and I can factor out a 2, u squared plus v squared. And so then I can cancel 1 and 4. Okay? Since I have a 2 in both of these, I can factor it out. And so then I end up with, and I've also, uh, I have this 1 half, and I have this 1 over 2 pi. And so I get 1 over 4 pi, which carries down. And then I have e to the negative 1 fourth times u squared over u squared plus v squared. Now, I need to make this, I want to find the marginal distributions. Okay, so this is the, so this is a joint, um, actually I need to find the joint distribution. And so to do this, I need to be, uh, I need to look at this as a normal distribution. I'm going to try to make this look like a uh, two normal distributions. And I want to find, so, so I found, first off, it's not clear here, but this is the joint distribution, okay? This is g of u of v. Now, one thing that I skipped is um, how we found out uh, this b. So I need to find b. So let me say that b, let's see, make it b, is equal to, so first a is equal to um, x between negative infinity and positive infinity, and y between negative infinity and positive infinity. And then I need to substitute in for x. So x is u plus v over 2, and y is negative infinity, y is u minus v over 2, okay? So from these inverse transformations here and here, I'm going to plug in. So first, I'm going to solve for u here, and so 2 times negative infinity is still infinity, and so I have u plus v is between positive and negative infinity. And then I have u minus v is between positive and negative infinity. Okay. And so I look at v, and so u, or v, so when I look at u, I can look at this, and I can say x and y, this one's easy, x and y, x plus y. So both of these go between 0 and, or negative infinity and positive infinity. So the minimum I could have is negative infinity plus negative infinity, so that's negative infinity. The maximum I could have is positive infinity plus positive infinity. So it's very easy for me to just say, actually, so... Um, yeah, so u is x plus y. So for this case, I don't have to, I can do this a lot easier than what I was about to. So b is equal to, so u, I can see, is between negative infinity and positive infinity. Now v, um, I can look at v and say, well, x could be positive infinity, and positive infinity minus anything would be positive infinity, except negative infinity. So we never get to positive or negative infinity, and we have to think about the limits here, okay? So don't, uh, actually, don't think about the limits. Think about the fact that we never get there. And so any value of y is never infinity or negative infinity. So as x approaches positive infinity, it doesn't matter what I subtract from it, it's still positive infinity. And as y approaches negative infinity, or as x approaches negative infinity, no matter what I subtract from it, it still is negative infinity, okay? So y, so if I look at this, I have negative infinity to v to positive infinity. So we have to be very careful with these. Sometimes we'll use these inverse transformations and substitute those in. Okay? This time I didn't need to. But you want to be very careful with these and make sure that you get this joint range of u and v.
So that's how we got this. Now I want to find the marginals of, actually, yeah, so I want to find the marginals of um, x and y. So I could have said, I could have said, or I should, could say that this is um, g of u, v, okay? And so this, with this, got to have both of these, then that is u of v, uh, uh, g of u and v, okay? But I now want to find the marginals, the marginal distributions of u and v, and I don't want to integrate. So find marginal distributions of u and v, u and v, without integrating. Okay. And this is a challenge. So what we're doing is we look at this and we say, okay, what does this look like? This looks like a, a normal distribution or, or the square, yeah, so this looks like some combination or multiplication of two normal distributions. I have, instead of square, instead of 2 pi, I have 4 over pi here. But I can make that work, maybe. So we're going to be clever, and we're going to um, look at this, and we're going to say, okay, let's break this up. And remember that we've got addition in the exponents. That means we can break up e and e. And then we just simply rearrange. So I need square root of 2 pi for both of them. So square root of 2 pi, square root of 2 pi, that's going to be 2 pi. So then I have uh, 2 left over. So I take the 2 and I take the square root. So I distribute it this, you know, the same amount to each of these. And then I need to have, so this means that this implies that sigma x is equal to square root of 2, which implies that sigma squared of x is equal to 2. And then I need to have the random variable divided by 2 times sigma squared. So this also, so 2 sigma squared of x. And that also implies that sigma squared of x is 2. And then I do the same thing with v. And once I have this, so now this fits the pattern of, um, so each of these fits the pattern of a standard normal distribution multiplied times each other, okay? So two standard normal distributions, okay? And so this is a standard normal distribution with mean zero and variance two. So I can call that x, sigma squared x, or sigma squared, not x, I'm sorry, that should be u I should have been using sigma squared of u, and sigma squared of v is also equal to 2. So, um, shouldn't use x there. Always think in terms of x, but this was using u. Okay. So we have that u is a normal distribution with mean 0. Why is it mean 0? Because this is a u squared. So that means it's u minus 0 quantity squared. This is mu. So if I just have u squared, that's equal to u minus 0 quantity squared. That tells me that my mean is 0. And then the same thing here. I have v squared, and so my mean is 0. And then my variance for v is 2. So here's what we have. That um, x plus y, so this is u. So x plus y is a normal 0 with 2 variance of 2. And x minus y is also a normal with variance of 2. So I want to recall to your attention that if I take the expected value of x plus y, okay, so x was normal 0, 1. That means that mu of x is 0. So e of x is 0. 
The same is true for y because y was also a normal 0, 1. And so e of y is equal to 0. So this is e of x plus e of y, which is 0. And then I have the variance of x plus y. If you remember, the theorem says this is the variance of x plus 2 covariance xy plus the variance of y. We said that x and y are independent, which means that the covariance of x and y are equal to 0. So this is just going to be the variance of x plus the variance of y. This is 1 plus 1, which is equal to 2. Now, you say, well, what about the, the x minus y? Well, x minus y, then what changes is this is no longer positive 2 covariance. This is negative 2 covariance. But this is still 0. So we still have variance of x plus variance of y, which is 2. So these are very important results. So make sure you know them. Okay, so that's enough for this video. We'll come back and do more examples in the next videos. Please don't forget to scan and upload your uh, notes before midnight of the date listed on the course calendar. If you have questions, come to virtual office hours. If you need help before you can come to virtual office hours, by all means, email me. But I need two things, the picture of the problem, because I may not have it handy, and a picture of your work so I can see how you're approaching the problem and help you best. Uh, so um, if you send me those two things by email, I'll be able to help you efficiently and quickly. So please take care of yourself and stay safe, and we hope to see you next time.